Hello guys, Luke Rowe here at Mockingbird Bell Farm. We are gonna do another tour. Um, it's gonna be the September tour. I'm really sorry, I think I skipped a month, the month of August, but so much have, has changed and you'll see for yourself, like a whole row is drastically different than from, I think it was in July that I last did a tour. Um, but as you can see behind me, no more tomatoes on this side, but there is still some on this side. Um, so start with this bed. Um, so as you can see, totally different. The fence is gone. Um, but so what I did was to, cause the, I mean, I planted the t tomatoes fairly early in the spring. So, but they were still producing um, because the manure and the wood chips and all that, they were breaking down, giving them tons of nutrients. So they had um, just a, an overload of nutrients. So they're like, we're just gonna keep on fruiting. Um, but I'm like, you guys gotta stop because I wanna put in a fall garden and I can't do that when you guys would keep on producing. So I cut off the growing points and so all the energy went into the tomatoes. Now they kept on suckering, so about once or twice a week I would come along and um, take the suckers off and compost them. Um, so that was a project because like all the energy is either going to go into the fruit, um, but I mean the plant doesn't like doing that. They just like making new suckers and making new branches. So um, yeah, I had to fight that, but um, I was able to um, pick a lot of ripe ones because I did that method, which is amazing. Um, but I was getting very agitated because they were not ripening as fast as I wished. Um, my goal was by September 1st was to um, just take them all down, whether they were green tomatoes or not. I then plant a um, fall garden, which I will be harvesting from throughout the fall and maybe even into winter um like the carrots and other root vegetables um so anyway i didn't do it on september 1st but during that week i did decide to tear it all down and compost all the stems and i did try to make some counterfeit sauce that i made up um using green tomatoes and basically you're adding meat and broth and all that to make it taste like uh, ripe tomato. So, well, the main things are the sugar and the tomato paste that make it <laughs> like you're actually eating ripe ones, even though you're not. Um, so anyway, here's these. These are chicory. Or not chicory, is that what it's called? No, not chicory. Um, it's slipping from my mind. Um, turnips, I don't know why. Chicory. Um, turnips. <laughs> uh, these are doing good. These are actually my second planting. I'll show you the other bud that's my first planting. Um, but anyway, these have struggled for the past few weeks because I put them in small, which is fine because you won't need to harden them off at all because they're, they'll get used to the environment a lot faster. Um, but if they're already like this big, you should probably hard them off and it'll probably take like a week to a week and a half. But if they're small like this, then you could just pop them right into the soil, even if you've been growing them inside um, under grow lights, which that's what I was doing. Um, in any case, there was, they were in the ground for a few days. I was watering them every evening. Uh, then after one evening, overnight it went down to the mid 40s and seed seedlings are very sensitive and susceptible to that when it's very very cold out and I think some of them didn't make it um, but some of them did as you can see um, there's also supposed to be a row of sp spring or fall onions all, all along here and then it goes like an L shape over there um, I don't know if they made it or not. I'll have to weed this bed because there's some grass 
and a lot of times I kind of mix onions and grass up because they look so much alike in the beginning seedling stage. Um, there's also supposed to be some fennel over here. I don't know if it made it either. Um, and then in the middle, there's supposed to be cabbage. And then we have some beets as well in here, as you can see. So there's a clump here, clump there, clump there, clump there, clump there. So I think most of them made it, which is awesome. Um, as you can see, there's more than one plant in each clump. So I love doing that because it saves a bunch of space and um, well, when planting, you're saving a lot of time as well because you don't have to um, put in as many holes, you know. Um, but anyway, why I do that is just like potatoes and stuff, as they grow since they're root vegetable, they, um, they expand and then they push all the other ones away from them. So basically, during the harvesting, you just pick the biggest ones um, and then let the other ones mature until they're a size that you like. So that's why I do, there's about, I sell about five to seven in each clump. Um, and they grow just fine. Uh, they like growing together, so. Yeah, anyway, so there's, yeah. They're doing good. Turnips, beets, cabbage, and onions are in this bed, so they're doing good. You can hardly see them. Um, I might add in some Chinese cabbage in the spaces. I'm also planning on today to put some compost around them and weed this bed, of course, but um, I just want to give them a boost. And I also did compost tea uh, last week, so I think that helped them a lot. I still have two buckets of, two five gallon buckets of the sunflower leaf tea, which will boost their, the potassium and um, some other minerals that they'll need to grow properly. So, and for some reason, my, there's this soil that I got from the garden factory. I'm nothing against them, but I've never seen this before. I transplant like 99% of the things that I do and for the all the times that I use them for some reason the leaves turn yellow after a few weeks and they become so leggy I have no idea what the reason is. Um, my, I might have to go back to my homemade stuff but I thought it would be easier to just buy a bag of, of already made stuff and then just put them right into the cell trays and sow your seeds but they have not been looking too pretty so i i think i'm just gonna go back to my my recipe um well not, not my recipe but the I, it's from nick ager um who is one of my mentors i guess um but that's where i got the the um, seed starting mix from the recipe and um, why I haven't been using it lately is because the barrel it's in a big I don't know it might be 20 20 gallon barrel or something and it's infested with aphid eggs or something um, and during the spring and early summer I was having a problem with that and they were eating some of my seedlings, which is terrible. But since it's fallout, they won't be able to survive because the cold weather is coming. So if if ever I sow um, seeds in like October or something, then I'm gonna use that soil, even though it's infested with aphids because they're gonna die once I put the plants out here because it's so cold out. Um, anyway, so that's that bed. And then this bed, Look at these guys, they're doing great. These have been in here since spring and they're looking pretty good. Um, some of them, I think about four or five of them didn't make it. I'm dealing with stem rot. I've never had this issue before ever. Um, so how I'm fighting it, I haven't looked up for any other solutions. Now you can do some probably some organic sprays if you want. 
Um, I have Bacillus thuringiensis and um, what's that other oil? Neem oil that I have as well. But what I'm doing, so every time I pick, so basically I'm going to pick today and I'm going to get all these outside leaves and then leave these. Or then um, after I pick, right after I pick, um, I look under the leaves, see if I see any caterpillars. If I do, I squish them on the leaf. That um, allows their dead, dead body scent to be very pungent and um the cabbage moths are kind of they don't like that um so i leave the squish stuff on the kale <laughs> um and then after that i also mix cayenne pepper with water um i then use an old toothbrush and brush the stems um uh it does two things it i mean again a lot of most I think all pets don't like cayenne pepper, so that's one thing. And then, since these are dealing with stem rot, like you could see, there's there's a lot of cavities in these stems here. Um, so once the fruit flies and other flying insects smell that, they start burrowing into the stem here. Um, but when you do the cayenne pepper, that liquid goes into the cavities. And is able to heal it um see it's not mushy anymore so it's healing it and um there's actually one over here where there's literally a cavity because of the stem rot but it's still alive see i don't know if you can see that see there's a hole and then there's a hole here look at i can literally stick my finger in. isn't that crazy but it it's kind of like a tree um you, you've seen a lot of like hollow trees like this and yet they're still alive. It's because the, the, the stem in the very middle here is for support. Um, right under this bark is actually what's actually living. Um, so that's how it's able to still live even without cavity. That's a squash bug right there. Been doing with them like all year. <laughs> um, but. Anyway, so the cayenne treatment thing is working very well. So I'm going to do that right after I pick. So it becomes a habit and I'm also getting less holes in my leaves. There's a few things here, but I mean, these look like different birds, but sparrows or something. But anyway, they're looking great. Um, and as, as the weeks go by these probably are gonna get more pest pressure because they're older plants so we'll just have to get ready for that um, anyway um, and I wanted to talk about another thing too um, this is powdery mildew um, and the same thing with like tomatoes you get blight and with sunflowers it got I think it's called rust or something but I mean, a lot of people, you can put like baking soda on it and it kind of helps. But the thing is, the plant is basically putting all its energy into, you know, all the fruits and stuff that are forming, okay? Um, and again, these are old plants as well. So the plant is just focusing on maturing the the fruit you know um so it's old and it's putting nutrients into the fruit those are the two reasons why and and i mean of course it's environmental um hum like a uh, moisture at night is the main reason for powdery mildew but um yeah don't don't worry about it okay it's just the plant trying to put all its energy into the Fruit, so don't don't make a big deal out of it. Um, okay, let's go down here so we can finish this bed, and then we'll go into the the bed number three and four. So this is the first planting um, of fall crops. This is doing so good. Um, I'm so happy with the result. Um, now these 
there's different rows. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can remember the different rows that I've done. So, um, so I don't know if you could see it. The spring onion right here. Um, so it's spring onion. They encircle the whole bed like this. And I think I might have done. I think I did the onions in the middle row too. Um, but I I really want to um, make the crops that we eat actually deter the bugs, you know? So a lot of pests don't like um, things from the allium family. Um, so like garlic, onions, chives, all those are in the allium family and they don't like them. So um, even though this netting is for insects, a lot of them still make their way in there. Um, so the scent of the onions will hopefully deter them even if they do try to make their way in there. So I wanna make that a habit, putting an allium in every bed that I do um, because it's double, you know, cause you're gonna harvest it, it's edible, but it's also helping um, deter the pests that are often found in your garden. So that's cool. Um, so, so it's onion, carrot, turnip, carrot, beet, yeah, beet, carrot, beet, carrot, turnip, carrot, and then, yeah, onion, and then carrot again. So they're doing great. I'm so impressed how much they've grown. I haven't been out here since early in the week, but maybe I'll just show you a little glimpse of how it looks on the inside, because you can only see so much when you're looking through the mesh. So I'm gonna give you a little glimpse of what it looks like. Let's see if I can, there we go. Yeah, so they're getting pretty big. Um, the carrots are doing great. I sewed, I forget, I think it's like five to eight or nine carrots in each clump. Again, you can put them in clumps because they'll, they'll, pull each, they'll push each other away as they grow, so you don't have to worry about them. Um, and if I do decide to pick them early, then it'll be so easy to harvest because you just pull the pull all the stems. So, um, and so a lot of I I think a majority of people. Um, nowadays when they're doing carrots, they sow direct because they say transplanting, it's, if you disturb the roots, again, it's the root, it's the root crop. Um, so if you disturb the roots, then you're going to kill them. Or if you're sell, like, selling them for like a CSA program, then they're going to be forked and you can't, p customers don't want to see, um, a carrot like this you know they want a single nice looking carrot um so i was like i mean i've done carrots three or four years ago and they did really good but a lot of them didn't germinate so i'm like what can i do where i could still transplant them but not not let them grow too far where i'm disturbing the roots so i put them in a I think it's a 90 cell tray it's a, or 96 cell tray or something. So the cells are only this big. And um, after five, five to seven days, I think they germinated so they're up from the soil and they still had their cotyledons, which is the when they germinate the first two leaves that come out. That's the cotyledon. Um, that'll give the energy to the true leaves that are coming out. So they were about this tall, still no true leaves coming out, and I planted them. And yeah, they did great. I don't know if all of them survived, but as you can see, it looks like most of them survived. Um, so that's the thing, you can transplant carrots, okay? Um, but just make sure that you're 
like even though they were only this big um their roots were the same size as they were above ground and maybe a little more um the roots were already coming like through the bottom of the of the seed tray um so i was like i gotta plant these um because i mean the roots was trying to come out of the bottom and that's the carrot so I was like I, I have to plant them right now um, and like I said on a couple tours ago I do water them for five days to a week and then I just leave them and let them find their own water but for carrots since they they need a lot of water and they're kind of like celery. Um, not only the germination, how long you have to wait, but also they need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. Um, so I did these more than a week. I think it was like a week and a half at least, or even two weeks. I watered them every evening, very good. And I also gave them compost tea along with that first bed that I was referring to earlier in this video. Um, but yeah, just make sure you give them more water than the other crops because they're very needful and yeah so I'm planning on um, picking these carrots um, probably even into winter because as especially I think it's for all root vegetables which this whole bed is basically um, they become a lot sweeter and more flavorful when you allow them to be exposed to that cold weather so yeah that's that bad so oh and see that's the that's the uh cabbage moth i think there's another name for it but i'm pretty sure they only go after brassica so they like going after my cow over there but see he's checking it out already but it's okay i'll check today for any eggs or caterpillars anyway so so here see this is a sucker that i have to keep on taking off see they're just appearing see this is all new because i haven't been out here in so long you know um actually i'll just cut it off here but if you want to make your tomatoes ripen faster then you just gotta keep on going at that. So after this video, I will see. They're getting ripe. So, but I, I still don't know what I'm gonna do. I think today I'm just gonna tear all this down. So there will be green tomatoes in the mix, but I think most of these are pretty well ripened. So it won't be a total loss. So and then I'm gonna, I'm planning on planting. Uh, Chinese cabbage and regular cabbage here or maybe not because <laughs> I mean it is well into the fall weather and I don't know if cabbage can survive the winter uh, even though it is a cold crop um, we'll have to research that but uh, yeah and the zucchini plants are still producing but a lot of them are getting they have a deficiency, see? They're starting to rot. Um, so I'm just gonna tear all these out and just pick them. So, and honestly, I usually don't like picking them when they're this small, but I mean, honestly, why would I wait to for them just to rot, you know, in the field? So yeah, I'm just gonna pick them. And I think they're packed with more flavor when they're small anyway. And they're more manageable. So, yep. So, these are doing great. Oh, and this has been a huge issue this year as well. On this farm, they have a bunch of chickens, and we had to clip most of the chickens' wings because they would just keep on coming in here. And yet, we don't know how they're coming into this garden, but they're just keep on coming in and destroying all our crops. So, as you can see, this I should have picked this a lot earlier, but. They literally ate like half of it. So it's still sal salvageable because you can just cut this right here and it'll, it, um, it excretes this 
like liquid that actually seals it um which if you don't grow organically then the liquid that is supposed to protect it from um like composting on your counter it won't be there so but thankfully i am growing organically um and it has that liquid in it so i can keep it on the counter for weeks you know until i i'm able to use it oh and here's one too that's a good size to pick awesome you never know what's hiding under those huge leaves you know um here's more this was actually um like i said on my earlier july tour i think it was um these are for um uh attracting pests so they don't go after the big mature ones over there but even so they're doing pretty good um i'm really happy how they're doing um for some reason they aren't coloring very dark this is supposed to be their actual color i don't know why they're making their leaves darker i don't know if that's a deficiency or something but whatever it's still edible so and i did pick some corn pretty good sized corn that i put on, on my instagram channel so there's still more, but I don't think it's even worth waiting for them. Um, yeah, I think the, Yeah, they're probably done for. Um, and I think I said this on the other tour as well. I had to literally tie them up because I didn't plant the seeds deep enough and they were all, I think 98% of them were like lying on the ground and that you can't pollinate like that so i had to stand them up and there was i think a majority of them did pollinate right in the the um what do you call them the kernels were full so um, anyway that was fine but the thing was uh not all of them germinated there was supposed to be two so it should have made a block all the way down but now it's just like a single row and some of them it was not good pollination at all so well it's a it's a learning curve and i think i should have done more than one seed in a hole uh, i just did one in a hole so i don't remember if i looked at the germination rate or not but i think that would have been a better thing i then just been thin it down to one you know so but now i know see that's how you learn then we have chinese cabbage i don't know if i'm gonna leave these here or not because what's happening is i'm just keep on taking off the outer leaves like the ones that are very ugly and i'm just waiting for them to hard up. i think they are now i think they're harding up now that's what i was waiting for but um i think they are harding up now that's great Okay, good. I was just gonna pick them anyway and just put them in salad, but I think they're doing good. Um, and I'm just gonna probably, um, after this video or later today, I'll just pick around the bad leaves, give it to the chickens, and then just keep on waiting for them to hard up. So that's very encouraging. I think there's at least um, eight to 10 plants there. So. That'll be a great harvest. And I'm also doing that because these also had a problem with stem rot. Um, and once it has it, there's no hope. You can't recover it after that. Um, so that's why I'm doing that because a lot of times they'll get stem rot because they're too close to another plant. So taking the outside leaves not only makes it look better because you have all this nice foliage but it also give them space in between there so they can properly grow um so anyway and then there's also um tomatoes here ripening um these ones actually ripen to pink that one's actually ripe right here and then they like they're a different reddish hue on the top which is pretty cool uh, then we have more butternut squash down there. I'm very tempted to make butternut 
squash marmalade this year but we'll just see it's it'll be in the winter when i decide but and then we also have these kind doing pretty good um and then these small pear-shaped ones they're doing really good too and yeah it's basically the same all the way down but not much action but there is some new stuff so yeah i'm this bad oh i love it um i didn't know if they would survive because again i put them in this small but i'm so glad i found out a way to transplant carrots um successfully you know put them in as small as possible when they germinated and then honestly you're not so if, if you sowed them right in here then you would be watering every day for for their germination but again carrots are very picky on moisture and all that but when you transplant you know exactly how many germinated and you're watering not to germinate the seed but to keep the plant alive that's two different things you know so oh i'm so excited i can't wait and again this is a lot for one person um this is a lot of food um but i love sharing you know and sharing your harvest is nothing better you know um, especially doing it organically there's nothing better than sharing what you grow um so that's what that what that's what makes me happy there's something about it um giving it away expecting nothing in return you know so anyway um thank you for watching it's been a pleasure <laughs> um i'll actually go over here and show you the sunflower tea that is i can't say it's brewing but it's like i guess you could say it's fermenting um doing pretty good but one of them i have to show you it's like i don't know what i'm i'm gonna do with it um so it i guess technically it is in an airtight container but it's still got mold so i'm like okay what do i do i don't want to waste it but like what if i use it and even if i skim off the moldy stuff what if it like makes whatever i'm putting it on moldy and disease you know more apt to get a disease so i don't know what to do with this one so i mean i don't think insects got into it but let's see it's moldy i think i'm i don't know what to do i think i'm just gonna skim off the top stuff and use it. so i'll have to use that soon but to catch 22, I think. Um, I'm definitely not gonna put it on the carrot row because I don't want anything to happen to that row, so. And then, I don't know if this is the airtight, but it's the only bucket that I could find. It's a cat litter box. So, and this is starting to move too. I don't see any flies in it, so that's good. Um, and I still have more of this. I actually have more um, eggshells in, I have to buy more vinegar though, and more eggshells in the house, so yeah, natural fertilizer and stuff that you usually have in your house anyway. And then I have my um, worm castings in here, so, and hopefully I, I'll do a um, houseplant video soon. Um, so this is what I'm using from the garden factory. This is the one, well, I, I saw mycorrhizae and I love that. I love mycorrhizae um, cause they allow your transplant cell to come right out, you know? Um, and um, like when you're taking the transplant out of the cell, um, it'll come out like, like without falling apart in your hands, you know? So that's one re reason why I was like, I'm gonna buy that. But now I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, Cause again, the yelling of the leaves and all that stuff, like, <sighs> but 
it cost like 50 bucks. So. Now I know, I don't even know if I'm going to use it anymore. But, well maybe I'll mix it in with my the homemade seed starting mix. I don't know yet. But, anyway, uh, thanks for watching everyone. It was awesome to have you along for the ride. Um, hopefully next month I'll remember to do another tour. Um, anyway, have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.